Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's word. God is speaking. I just want to ask you quickly today how bad you want it. Listen, there's some areas of our life that we may find that we've not been victorious in. Some things we've not overcome. Some accomplishments that we wanted to make, but we haven't made it. Some goals that we set, but we haven't obtained them. Some things that we have set in our life that we said we wanted to do. Some things that we dreamed of. Some visions that we've had. Some things that we wanted to conquer, to overcome. And it just hasn't happened. And let me just... Uh, um, just share with you that oftentimes this has nothing to do with God because you know sometimes you want to say well maybe it isn't God's time and maybe God doesn't want this to happen maybe God isn't helping me maybe he doesn't hear my prayers but the thing is is that most of the time it's because we haven't put in the effort that we need to we haven't put in what it is that we need to put in in order for us to win look I'm looking at second Kings chapter 13 this is a verse that I've taught on several times, but it seems that oftentimes we just don't get it. And I'm looking at verse 14. It talks about Elisha. I'm in the New Living Translation. It's worded slightly different, but it's the same meaning as the King James. It just simply says, when Elisha was in his last illness, King Joash of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel, he cried. And Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. And Elisha told him, put your hand on the bow. And Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. Then he commanded him, open the eastern window. And he opened it. Then he said, shoot. And he shot an arrow. Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram, for you will completely conquer the Aramians of Aphek. And so then he tells him in verse 18, then he says, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten a ram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. Then Elisha died and was buried. Listen, this man was looking at his enemies and Elisha tells the king, look, get some bows and get some arrows. He does that. You know, sometimes we gather together the things that we need in order for us to be victorious. But then he tells him, shoot. So he takes one of the arrows, he shoots it. He says, you know, Elisha tells him, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over a ram, over your enemies. You're going to completely destroy your enemies. This is the weapon that you need. But then he tells him, pick up the other arrows and strike them. So he just, uh, one, two, three. He just strikes them three times. And it tells us the man of God was angry angry with them, told him you should have done it five or six times. Then you would have completely beat them. You would have overcome your enemy, completely devoured him. You would have beaten him. You would have conquered him completely. But now you're only going to be victorious three times. You're only going to get what you put into it. Listen, sometimes we know what we need to do, but we don't do it. Some people have been hurt deeply and you can't get healed of the hurt because the word of God tells you to forgive. But you just say, well, I'm going to just stay away from him. I love him from afar. But that's not what the word says. The word tells you to love your enemies, to do good to them that hate you, to pray for those that despitefully use and persecute you, to bless them uh, that curse you. But we want to do the minimum. People want to conquer. They want to accomplish something. They want money. They want their businesses to grow. They want their ministry to increase, but they don't want to put in. They don't want to pray. They don't want to read the word. They don't want to put God first. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But people don't want to put in the time. They don't have time to go to church. They don't have time to read the word. They don't have time to pray all day and pray without ceasing. People want to see family members deliver, but they don't want to get on their face and pray. They don't want to fast. They don't want to seek God for. They don't want to stand in the gap. They don't want to minister to them. People want a job. They want a career, but they don't want to put in 40 hours to look for that job. They just want to look an hour or two here and then do their own thing. Some people want something, you know, that they have a dream or a vision, but they're so busy doing so many other things and getting involved in so much other stuff that they're just putting a little bit here and a little bit there. And then when they only get a little bit back, then they wonder why. Because you only struck it three times, but you should have done it five or six. Listen, if God can do anything, but we always have something that we're accountable for, something we're responsible for. There is effort required. When you do what God tells you to do, he blesses that. When you do it to the maximum, you get the maximum back. And so this is what we need to understand. People always seem to understand this in the church when they hear about sowing some money and they're going to get some back. This is in everything. Listen, when you pour out, God pours in. When you do what he tells you to do and you do it 100%, you will get back what you put into it. 
You can't graduate, you know, from a college if you're not going to go to class, if you're not going to do the homework, if you're not going to study for the test. It's not enough that you signed up. It's not enough that you, you know, got your grants and your loans. It's not enough that you went to the class the first month. It's not enough that you uh, that you at least did some of the homework and you studied for a couple of the tests. No, you got to study for all the tests. You have to do all the homework and then you have to study for the exam. You got to go to class. You got to be there. You got to listen. You have to put in everything and then you'll get what you put into it. And this man, this is an example of even the, the wanting victory over the enemy. Many are dealing with strongholds and addictions and habits and, and generational curses and want to know why they can't overcome and why they can't do better and why they keep going back because you're not using all your tools. See, we want to just use a little bit. Some people have habits or addictions, but they'll say, well, I'll just stop doing this, but they won't get rid of the phone numbers, turn away from the corrupt companions. They won't get out of the ungodly places and turn away from let go of some things that they want to hold on to, but there are things that trigger them that cause them to go back fall back, fall down. There are people that know what they need to do, but they only want to do the minimum. Listen, you can't do the minimum and conquer the enemy. You can't do the minimum and overcome your past and overcome the uh, strongholds in your life. You've got to do it all. You got to pray. You got to praise. You got to work and worship. You got to seek God. Surrender to him and everything in your life that you want to see accomplished and you want to see move forward. You've got to move in it. You've got to walk in it and you've got to put 100% into it. Don't do the minimum and expect the maximum. You do the maximum and you can expect everything. Listen, God is able. He's not short in what he's able to do, but sometimes we're short in what we're willing to do. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are watching and listening right now. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we would do everything heartily as unto you according to your word. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we're not double-minded, lukewarm, but Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that we are steadfast and immovable, that we are focused on the things that you purpose for us, that Father, we're pouring everything into what you called us to. I thank you, Lord God, that you make the dreams and the visions come to pass, that you cause us to be more than conquerors to him that loved us, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, that we know we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us, that we die to the flesh and live after the spirit. Father, that we don't allow our flesh to control us slow us down or distract, distract or deter us from what it is you called us to. But Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, Father, that we are on fire, that we're moving forward in purpose, on purpose, led by your spirit. Father, and I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that, Father, as you order our steps, we're walking in it. And so, Father, thank you for the victory. Thank you for making us overcomers and victorious. Thank you, Lord God. We give all praise, glory, and honor to you because you are worthy. Help us to be diligent in the things of God. Help us to be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing the work of the Lord is not in vain. Father, we bless your name. We honor you. We thank you for who you are, all that you've done what you're doing and what you're about to do in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Listen, we have a wow movement, the watchman on the wall. We intercede and pray and stand in the gap Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can join us on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or you can call the phone number underneath this YouTube video and join us, if you will, as we stand in the gap, as we get some word, as we get prepared for the mission field each one of these days and we go forward as witnesses and we believe God for signs, wonders, and miracles. Listen, we want you to be a part God is moving in the body of Christ, joining believers together, causing us to stand in the gap and pray and get the word in us so we can walk in the word. So if you want to get notifications when I upload videos, please hit subscribe and the bell uh, below so that you can get notifications. If you already have, God bless you. And thank you for tuning in. Listen, I'm encouraging you. Share the gospel with somebody today who's not saved. Share this message with somebody who needs to get busy. And trust God for the miracles. Because as long as you do what God told you to do, God will always do what he promised to do. Have a blessed day in the Lord. And I'll see you next time.